What's going on, guys? This is your motivation guy, and I really mean that. That's right, your friend, the one and only Keith Allen. Your motivation guy is here to tell you keep going, keep striving. So with the first DreamHack tournament coming to an end, and FNCS alongside many more cash cups ahead, it's becoming more and more necessary for players to improve and give themselves that opportunity to be one of the best, right? Without a doubt, those players who strive for greatness and continue to improve and learn are the ones who are going to walk out of these tournaments and events with the largest winnings of cold, hard cash. Who wants the money? I know I do. So what are their secrets and tricks that give them such a competitive advantage compared to all the other players? So in this video today, we're going to be going over some of the most advanced tips to give you guys that edge in competitive high skill lobbies. Whether it's hype night, arena, or cash prize events, these tips are going to help you guys improve significantly. Also, if you're looking to get exclusive tips and tricks directly from the pros, you got to check out ProGuys.com where we have the best coaches in the world. Whether you need improvement in mechanics, building, confidence, or really anything, ProGuys has it covered. And I also just started my new live class called Your Motivation. Listen, this is the class where you're going to overcome your fears. You're going to overcome all the obstacles that goes on in your mind. So you can not only be great in this game, but also in life. So I hope you guys join me every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. All right, ProGuys has it all, man. You guys have to head over to ProGuys website and be sure to sign up and start improving rapidly today. Since we're on the topic of improving rapidly, before we do that, you already know what time it is. Bunch of crunch, army. It's time to sit back. Come on, relax, and grab some of my favorite candy. Let's eat it right now. It's that bunch of crunch, and let's get this going, man. Since we're on the topic of improving, all right, we got to talk about one of the best tips to see an almost instant improvement in your gameplay. This is because this tip doesn't require practice or any sort of learning to do. Yeah, I just said that. All it requires is that you think about it and you just start doing it the right way during games. It sounds kind of easy and trust us, yo, it is. But there are some special secrets that go into it. So make sure you're really absorbing all the details today. Basically, all right, a lot of times in intense games where you're playing against really, really good players, you're going to find yourself getting into fights that are going to take up a lot of your attention. And these fights are going to need a lot of focus. They're going to need a lot of strong mechanics and really good decision making in order for you to come out successful. And the main problem you're going to run into is known as tunnel vision. This is basically putting nearly 100% of your focus on one person. And although this sounds like a good thing, it's quite the opposite especially high intensity lobbies, which are full of sweaty players. If you've ever experienced third partying, <laughs> you're basically seeing the negative effects of tunnel vision. Yeah, I get it because I've been there a whole lot and it's annoying, man. So what tunnel vision does is it distracts you so much from everything happening that you don't even notice other players around you. And believe it or not, it happens more often than you think. So being in the zone and just going ultra instinct is a very popular concept in gaming and one that is heavily sought after even by top tier pros. And it's oftentimes mistaken with tunnel vision, which is probably what may make a lot of you guys think that zoning in on one player is a really good choice. Instead, this is what I want you to do, all right? Always pay attention to what's going on around you. Every chance you get, glance on the corners of your screen and just look at all the area around. You should take advantage of this, my friends, and quickly scan to make sure there's nothing out of the ordinary, such as player movements or new structures even being built. So make sure that you're using your headphones and your audio to hear any potentially unwanted players sneaking up behind you. Using these different cues can make a very big difference in the amount of times you end up taking damage from players you didn't even know were even looking at you. But most importantly, be willing to disengage from fights. Yeah, and you gotta box up, especially if you're in a bad situation. Having this immersive awareness of everything happening around you is gonna make a significant difference in your gameplay and you're gonna win more fights. The moment you begin to think about it and just focus on not getting zoned into a single fight, you're gonna see the positive benefits of good awareness rolling in. So while you guys are aware of what's happening in your games, we're always aware of the newest changes and the metas, right? And one of the newly found and most meta affecting features of season three is the rapid changes to the map. Unfortunately, these can mean that one day you're going to wake up and realize that your old perfect drop spot is no longer as good or as viable as it used to be. That happened to me and that was a hard morning. Anyways, got to move on. This happened to a lot of players during the recent DreamHack event, so not alone. And it was mainly due to some good changes that Epic made, right? Yes, I guess there were good changes. Yeah. Even good changes have the potential to hurt your drop spots. I know, I get it. Because these good changes can make other spots more advantageous than ones that may have previously been better. 
These changes specifically were lower water levels, making the majority of the map more land than water now. Introduction of new rivers with currents and some major land-based changes to many major POIs such as Pleasant Park. But most importantly, Epic made it so that you can actually build on every part of the water. So, no matter where you are or how shallow, as long as you're over water, you can still build and protect yourself, which wasn't always the case in the beginning of Season 3. So how can we counter this pestering Season 3 feature? Alright, to begin with, always have more than one drop spot. Always, always, always. Have a few drop spots that you've mastered and are comfortable with. Mastery means that you know all the loot spawn locations, you know all the chest spawn locations, the fastest loot paths, and all the cool features it may have such as certain points of high ground or things such as slurp barrels and other nifty little nooks and crannies. Basically, you gotta know these drop spots like you know your house or you know where you live, right? Or you know your neighborhood. This has to be like your backyard. By having multiple effective drop spots, which you've mastered, you're going to always be able to have a backup in case one day these map changes catch you off guard and cause a problem in your original drop spot, just like it did to me. In addition, <laughs> by doing this, you can also change your drop spot like whenever you need to in case you find that you're not performing well on your first choice. Second, all right, run a few practice games in arena or scrims the day of big events and tournaments before they actually begin, all right? This is going to give you guys a general idea of the traffic patterns of drop spots and really the overall effectiveness of your drop spot on that exact day. This is a very undertone thing as most players like to just warm up their mechanics and then just hop straight into their games. So by doing this, you're going to have the knowledge, man, and the up to date experience with your drop spots that other players probably didn't have. Now, right before we run into this next technique, if you haven't already, guys, check out ProGuys.com. And trust me when I say this, we have all the new live classes, just like I talked about. Master courses with pros such as Benji and Mongrel and pro one-on-one -on -one coaching. You got to check us out today. You got to check out my live class too, man. I'm helping people out every single day, not only playing the game they play, but also in life. All right, the next major aspect of this season is the removal of the pump and the introduction of the new charge shotgun. All right, the charged shotgun gives the mechanical and overall combat aspects of Fortnite a complete revamp. Not only can players do higher and more consistent damage, but things like edit plays and other fast-paced maneuvers are actually much harder to perform now. To put this into perspective, all right, let's say that one player is in complete control over another player by boxing them, right? If both of these players have a charged shotgun, the opponent who is actually boxed in has the advantage over the one who has edit control over all the walls. Why is this? You're probably asking, all right? Well, let me tell you this. While the charge shotgun has a much higher pullout time than the pump and tactical, making it very inconsistent, especially for edit plays and fast-paced tricks. But I gotta say this, on the flip side, it can do crazy amounts of damage when charged up. Woo! And it's a very accurate weapon, by the way. Meaning that the player who is tracking and charging up their shotgun not only is gonna do more damage, but they're going to be more accurate since they don't have to worry about editing. And just for the cherry on top, they don't have any pullout time. Thankfully, we have two pro tricks that are very effective for countering the charged shotgun. Here we go. You guys ready? All right, check this out. The first is for scenarios where you're in control of a platform, such as like a wall or a floor, which is between you and your opponent. All right, so the best and the one of the smartest ways to actually turn your disadvantage into an advantage is by baiting your opponent and just faking them out. Instead of just opening up and trying to go for a quick shot and reset, open up and wait just barely half a second, then just quickly reset the edit. What this is going to do is it's going to prompt your opponent to try and shoot you, but by the time they release, you've already reset. This makes them shoot your floor or wall, which will almost always destroy it if it's directly after a reset. This gives you a clear opportunity to get a shot off while they just wait for their charge to cool down and give them another shot. The second trick for countering the charged shotgun's overpowered nature has to do with box fights where you're in control. All right, so as we mentioned before, if you're in a box and you have control of the edits, you're usually in a disadvantage due to the enemy holding a charge on you. But there are actually a few ways you can counter this one. All right, these are all going to have to do with the art of misdirection. The first trick is going to be a ramp flip, which is going to give you a quick angle as well as ample time to charge up your shotgun is super important. So what you're going to do is go into edit mode on your ramp, right? And instead of just flipping it or editing it in a way that exposes you to your opponent, you want to edit it in a way that puts them on top of the ramp in a half ramp edit. What this does is it creates kind of a sort of ledge that will provide cover for you. 
You could use this ledge to create time to charge up your shotgun. Then as soon as you're ready to shoot, jump on the side with the tallest part of the ramp and quickly release during that short period of time you get an angle. Then quickly reset the ramp after and it will completely protect and separate you from the opponent. This is a very effective and often confusing trick to do against opponents. They never expect you to edit in a way that still gives you cover, which almost always throws them off. Rotational items have always had a significant amount of importance in Fortnite. Things like ballers, impulse grenades, shadow bombs, launch pads, bounce pads, <laughs> and more were absolutely loved by competitive players, right? These items granted that the ability to rotate easier with more variety and strategy. With the addition of like, you know, peppers into the game as well as crash pads, players can now carry them with them as long as they like and just use them whenever necessary. These items are very popular utilities amongst pro players, man, and they can be extremely effective in the end game, and not just for rotations either. Martos himself uses a very effective trick to W key into boxes by basically throwing a crash pad into the wall near the opponent he wants to push. This pushes him into the box and gives him the element of surprise, man. But they can also be used for getting quick rotations in the end game as well, avoiding fall damage and even for taking high ground from opponents in only a few moments. Peppers, whoo! Peppers can also be used as very effective rotational items as well when paired with floppers, especially in the hectic end game where everyone is sprinting to get to the next zone. Overall, these two main utility items and utilizing them with the strategy, man, it's a very advanced level technique that will make a significant difference in the consistency and effectiveness of your placements during matches, okay? Once again, this is your motivation guy. That's right, your friend, the one and only Keith Allen. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and keep eating that butchy crunch. And we'll see you later. Peace.